It's a little bit like the eternal swamp of despair. We're Mela and Don, and we travel full time in our 40 foot bus with our cats Pizzicato and Mr. Sweetface. We've just started an adventure up the Oregon coast. And our first stop was a welcome greeting. So excited. But we didn't get far before we ran into trouble. Everything is booking up at the coast. More mosquitoes here. Uh -huh. Uh, Mr. Sweet started foaming at the mouth. There are so many places that we want to visit, but one that's been on the top of my list for a while is the Oregon coast. And driving up the 101, is just one amazing view after another. We'd picked out a campground for our next day and we're looking forward to having 11 days of relaxation as we celebrated our one year anniversary of living in our bus, Eleftheria. This scenic drive got all our excitement bubbling to the surface. How could it not just look at it? but we tried to keep our expectations in check. Passing through Coos Bay and North Bend, over the McCullough Memorial Bridge, we turned left missing all the warning signs. We were not ready for this. There's trees in the middle of the dunes. I've never seen anything like that. They're like growing in the dunes. For site. Site one. We've had some really great luck with finding great campgrounds, but they can't all be winners. And unfortunately, we don't like this one. We had some big plans. We we're gonna celebrate something very special. And unfortunately, we're kind of miserable here. Looking at the photos online of this campground, we thought this looks great. There's like so much nature around you. You've got so much privacy. We can spend time outdoors and relaxing. That's what we really wanted to do. But the reality is <laughs> the pictures might look great, but we don't want to be outside. <laughs> There are more mosquitoes here than I've seen anywhere else, which makes us have to bundle up. It's not cold out. We're just bundled up so the mosquitoes don't eat us alive. We went ahead and bought another mosquito repellent thing so that we could try to have a little outdoor time, but we just haven't been motivated. It's been cloudy and overcast the entire time we've been here. We still got enough power. We're fine to stay indoors, but it's just gloomy. And that's no fun at all. We're really close to the beach and we thought that was gonna be fun. <laughs> but it's weird, it's like marshy here, which is why there's so many mosquitoes. And if you head to the closest towns, North Bend and Coos Bay, they're only like a 20 minute drive from here and there'll be some sun there. But it's just always overclassed and gloomy. It's a little bit like the eternal swamp of despair. Oh my god! Ah, what is it? 
the bog of eternal stains. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's not that horrible, but it's just no fun. We don't want to come outside. We, we don't even want to cook outside because of the mosquitoes. Now, if there's somebody who enjoys this campground or this area, we mean no offense. It's just not for us. And we've been struggling to find reservations because summer's coming up, everything is booking up at the coast, and we found this place for 11 days. And we were like, yes, this looks great. Well, there's a reason why nobody's here in this campground. The cats still want to go outside, so we've tried to take them out as much as we can, and now they're very jealous that we're walking around because <laughs> they haven't been able to go out very much. What's up, buddy? What's up? So all this leads us to say is uh, we still have seven more days we can stay here because we booked it. No, more than that. It was 11 days and we've only been here like two nights. <laughs> you got mosquitoes all over you. Well, would tonight be number three? Uh, number three, number four, yeah. So it's eight or nine nights? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> All right, we're going back in, guys. Let's get in. Oh. oh, there he is. Got him. Every time we open the door, we get mosquitoes coming in, too. So it's just a constant mosquito battle. We've always said that if we're not happy somewhere, we don't like the neighborhood, we'll just move. And that's the joy of living in a bus. So that's what we're gonna do. We paid for 11 nights. We're just gonna forfeit that money and go find somewhere else. We'll figure it out. Nothing's available to reserve, but we're not happy, so we're gonna go. Mr. Sweetface, there's mosquitoes out there. You don't care? You wanna go? Mr. Seaface does not seem bothered by the mosquitoes at all. Pizzicato does seem bothered. We're keeping her inside, but Mr. Sweet doesn't understand why I want to cut his walk short. Uh, yeah, our cat is foaming at the mouth. Oh my God, done. How you doing, buddy? Hmm. You feel a little better? So suddenly, uh, Mr. Sweet started foaming at the mouth, and of course we're concerned, trying to find out if there's a vet, a 24-hour vet in the area. Um, got a hold of one that's two hours away. That was the closest one. That's 24 hours. They told us basically that it could be just a allergic reaction. Their suggestion was to watch him for the next couple hours, make sure he doesn't have a respiratory issue, and make sure he doesn't vomit. It's pretty intense. Mel is very upset, obviously. Uh, I'm upset, but I, I'm trying to keep it together in case I need to drive us two hours to have the cat looked at. Just felt feel kind of stupid, like my gut t kept telling me we should just get out of this place. And I don't know, maybe that's the lesson behind today's, behind this campsite's adventures. We, you gotta listen to your gut when you live in a vehicle on the road. He was foaming so much, like it was so much foam and he was so freaked out. And they said maybe it was some mushroom residue, like he eats grass when he's outside. I try to watch what he's eating, like that, I mean, Cats also don't normally go for stuff they shouldn't, but he was eating some long grass, as he always does. But they said maybe there was mushroom residue. I didn't see any mushrooms outside. I definitely wouldn't let him eat mushrooms. But it's so damp out here. It's so damp, like, who knows? He's calmed down. He's not foaming. morning. We are ready to get out of here. Mr. Sweetface seems to be doing fine. He's 
eating and drinking. We're ready to leave. I wish we had left sooner. We had work to do and we didn't know where to go. But we've got a plan today. We still don't know where we're gonna be, but we've got a plan. Another fun fact about this place is that there's pretty much no one here, but there is one couple in the middle of the loop who they seem to have moved in. There's no camp host. We haven't found anybody who works here. And they kind of block the one-way loop with their car. We barely made it through with the Jeep. We're definitely not gonna make it through with the bus. We're not confrontational people. We just wanna get out of here. So Don has decided it's a one way. We can't turn the bus around. He is actually gonna pull the bus out of the spot and then reverse all the way back down through this loop. And I'm gonna watch just for a little extra support. Mosquitoes are eating me alive as we do this. We know this is just a little bump in the road, and as soon as we left, we knew this was the right choice. We have moved about an hour up the coast to Florence. We are at the Three Rivers Casino. They have a massive parking lot here with huge spaces for RVs. We are gonna leave the bus here and go scout out a few different places. We are happy to stay here if we need to. We can stay for free for one night. If we play in the casino, we can stay here for free for longer. So we know we at least have this place. But we want to go find the perfect place for us to celebrate a one year bus anniversary and have a retreat. We're on our way to our first spot. It's BLM land. It's supposed to be BLM land. And we've got to a railroad crossing and it says private railroad crossing, no trespassing. But it's a little confusing because it's supposed to be BLM. Yeah. And, and this is taking us on a different route, like nope. a shortcut? Nope. No. I checked it. Well, should we cross and turn around? It's a little confusing. You're sure you got the right directions? It's positive. You're sure you got the right directions? It's positive. It's positive. I decided to double check the directions because I just couldn't believe that that was the route to BLM. And I'm glad I did because it was the wrong directions. I don't know where it was taking us, but we found the BLM we were looking for. It was pretty nice. Plenty big enough for the bus. Paved road, a little bumpy at places, but not horrible. We've been down way worse. We think we would probably get like four hours of sunshine, which should be enough to charge up. It's really pretty and peaceful. There's a creek back over here. I think it's gonna be pretty nice. There's big dragonflies. At first we thought there were some mosquitoes, but there's butterflies and dragonflies. We're really hoping this works out for us because we wanted free camping, seeing as we had to forfeit our money. We do have to do some work though. That's why Don wants to just make sure that we're gonna be able to get some internet while we're here. It's not ideal. There's no reception. No cell service, no AT&T, no T-Mobile, no Starlink. Couldn't get Starlink to boot up. So that's not great, but it's doable. So we're gonna keep searching. Good morning. Oh no, good afternoon. <laughs> we kind of dropped you guys yesterday. That BLM land was not super duper close and after four hours of just scouting out that BLM land we were wiped out so we got some fish and chips and we came home to relax well Don didn't Don went and played some roulette in the casino because if you earn points you can stay for free longer so he earned plenty points for us to stay here for quite a few days and he won back some money 
that we lost from going uh, away from that campground that we paid for. So it's all working out pretty good. But he did talk to somebody local about that BLM land and they said, if you camp there, don't leave your rig. There are tweakers in those woods and if you go, they will break in and steal your stuff. So that's out. We'll probably scout out some first come, first serve campgrounds up the coast. The sites were in full shade. With no hookups, we'd need solar. Looks like a really nice campground. Or the ones with sunlight were too small for us to fit in. But we'll keep searching. We decided today we may as well make our scouting fun and see some sights. This is feeling like the impossible hunt to find a place to stay. And I'm not sure we've explained to you yet fully why we're searching for somewhere so hard. We realized about two weeks ago that we we're starting to burn out again, moving too quick, doing too many things. So we decided we were gonna try to take a four day or maybe five day retreat for ourselves. Just make our own retreat. But in order to do that, we have to find a place that's quiet, that we have some privacy, and that we can just park the bus and not worry about anything for five days. Uh, summer just started, there's almost no place to camp right now, so we're looking at all the first come, first serve spots. This is incredibly beautiful up here. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like this is the Oregon coast people get so excited about. This part for the next like 40 miles up from here north. This is, this is stunning. Now there's an entire tourism destination points built around Oregon's lighthouses. This is the Hesita Head Lighthouse. I mean, doesn't this seem just like the perfect surrounding for taking a retreat? And Time off. It's so beautiful. Why can't we find a spot? I still have faith we're gonna find a spot on yeah. Sunday when, yeah. when we need to find a spot. We've got plenty of casino points to stay for a few more days. I can go win some more casino points. <laughs> we can just kind of sightsee in the area and take it easy and let the cats not be stressed about moving. This is a beautiful area though. I'm starting to really see why people love the Oregon coast now. <laughs> Better than the bug of despair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this lighthouse is pretty cool. It's got amazing views and of course it's here to function for safety for the ships. But where do you see where the lighthouse keepers live? <laughs> it is some prime real estate. If you don't mind living alone. How do I apply for a <laughs> lighthouse keeper? <laughs> it's not a bad view. <laughs> fun little hike time and sightseeing. It's over. We're going to move on to our next scouting adventure. It is another beautiful campground. Oh, I like it here. Not looking good so far. But these aren't first come first serve. King Perpetua. Not going to work. This is our last hope for this area. If there's only one spot here that we could fit into that is first come first serve. It's not currently available and we don't love it. It's really tight. So now we gotta drive nine miles the wrong way <laughs> to get gas. Because <laughs> Hutton wasn't prepared. There was no gas for like ever. So now we gotta keep going, get gas. It's so weird having someone <laughs> for your gas for you. like. In Oregon, um, you can't pump your own gas. Since we had to drive further anyway, we checked out three more campgrounds. And still, nothing was available for our size bus. But we thoroughly enjoyed the views. We came home once again with mixed feelings of just feeling disappointed or down that we couldn't find anywhere to stay but understanding because it's so beautiful no wonder everything's booked up 
But other than scouting out campgrounds, there's another way we had been searching this entire time for a campground. And right at the moment where we were about to give up on camping up the Oregon coast this summer, something came through for us. At this point, we finally decided we were going to use a service to search for campground cancellations. I knew there were services out there, but we'd never really needed them before. Four or five services I know of. We decided to go ahead and just sign up for three of them and use them all three at once. So I can give you the pros and cons of which ones we liked and which ones seemed to not work at all for us. Start with the paid sites, we used Camp Scanner. I got a referral code from Harvest Host, so my membership was $39 for the year, I believe. It's normally $79 a year. Almost all the services are pretty much the same, except for Camp Scanner limits you to searching a three-day range for when you could check in. And all of them allow you to filter out campsites by campground, by how many days minimum you want to stay, and by your vehicle size. This one was my least favorite. I got zero notifications, even though I was monitoring the same campgrounds with this one and the next one, which was Camp Nab. Now Camp Nab has uh, monthly or yearly billing plans. I think it's as low as $10 a month. I went ahead and signed up for the $20 a month so I could put multiple campgrounds for searching for cancellations. What I liked about Camp Nav is it gave you a up to six day check-in window so it would search for those six days where you could check in and we received two notifications while we were searching. My favorite service though was a free service, Wandering Labs. Uh, my friend Chi had told me about this and this is the first time we used it and it was great. We've got dozens of notifications. The limitations on the free plan is you can only have three searches going at a time, but I love how it gives you a wide range of dates that you could check in and gives you the same way to search for minimum stay and minimum rig size. Needless to say, we've canceled our Camp Scanner and Camp Nav memberships. Now, we have no affiliation with any of these websites or services, but I wanted to give you our firsthand experience here, and uh, hopefully that'll help you somewhere down the road. So we were thrilled when we managed to get four nights at the Beverly Beach State Park, a little further up the coast, but we still had a few days left that we needed to stay here in this casino parking lot. This casino parking lot has kind of been our saving grace and I never thought I'd say this, but we've been so much happier in this casino parking lot than we were in that Blue Bull campground down south. With a few days here, we've been able to catch up a little work in this wonderful casino parking lot and also do some day trips to explore the area. We got to do some hiking. The Oregon Coast Trails that we found, you're either hiking on sand or you're in extremely dense, lush forest. Some of these old growth trees are just covered in moss. It's crazy. We ran up a little further north to the Sea Lion Caves. We thought this was going to be a bit of a tourist trap. We weren't sure about spending the money to go there, but it was great. I highly recommend it, we loved it. The elevator takes you down almost 20 stories to view the natural sea cave. This is America's largest sea cave. In the winter months, the cave acts as a shelter for hundreds of sea lions. When spring arrives, the sea lions and birds use this area for breeding and birthing.
And then probably our favorite little day trip is we drove north about 30 some minutes and went to a site called Thor's Well. When we just arrived here, this kid jumped out the car and went, Dad, look, there's splashy rocks. <laughs> and <laughs> now every time I see waves crashing against rocks, I'm gonna think of that splashy rocks. <laughs> That was a big wave. I can see where there's signs that say, <laughs> don't stand by it, because <laughs> it'll take you out to sea. When I first read about Thor's Well in this area, I thought, yeah, splashy rocks. Similar to that what that kid thought too. This is really impressive. It's really beautiful. The black lava rock, this fluorescent green moss that's growing everywhere, and then you got the sea just pummeling the landscape, shooting waves way up in the air. I could watch it all day long. It's so mesmerizing. <laughs> the best damn splashy rocks I've ever seen. <laughs> And today is moving day. We're kind of bittersweet to be leaving this parking lot. I have loved being here at this casino parking lot, not worrying or stressing. We've had sunshiny days. Now we're heading up to the coast. It's only about an hour, 15 minute drive according to our guides, which means it'll be two hours on the RV. <laughs> <laughs> and someone who is looking forward to leaving the parking lot is Mr. Sweetface. He's ready for some nature. <laughs> wasn't difficult enough, they had to add another layer of complication. <laughs> another beautiful view. Goodness. Though this week started out rocky, we were grateful to have found a safe parking spot for the week. We're grateful that it led us to exploring more sites that we may have missed if we hadn't had these troubles. And we're grateful that wherever we park for the night, we can feel comfortable in our home. Oh, look at this road, honey. Oh, goodness. Oh. We arrived looking forward to being amongst the trees. But we weren't the only ones looking forward to exploring the campground.
This campground was just what we needed. 